Welcome, friends. I'm Pastor Dale Peterson, Senior Pastor at Faith Lutheran in Waconia, Minnesota, and I'm glad you've joined me for this session of guided prayer and meditation. Good to have you along on this session. I do invite you to rest comfortably wherever you are, to take some time to sort of get out the kinks and the wiggles and find a way to to settle comfortably. If that's in a chair and some choose to lie on the floor, to be seated comfortably in a couch, wherever it is for you, I invite you just to let your weight sink. As might be obvious already, I close my eyes for much of our session. That helps me to move my thoughts inward, to eliminate distractions from the outside, uh, things I see around me maybe that I need to do or get to. So if it works for you, it's comfortable at any time in the session, let your eyes just gently close and soften your face, let your jaw relax. You can allow your shoulders to, to release and to slump. Let your mid-body, your weight, your center, just let it relax. Sink into the chair or wherever you are. See if you can feel yourself being held just as God holds you in God's loving hands and breathe. We'll begin our session with a little breathing exercise common to many practices. And if this is new to you, this might seem weird or, but it's just breathing. It's just your breath. So the practice is to inhale through your nose for a count of four, to hold it, that breath, for a count of seven. Then exhale through your mouth to a count of eight. And deep breathing has shown to reduce stress, to relax us, to help move our thoughts from our head to our heart, to help us to focus. So I invite you maybe just three times through to try that exercise. And if it's uncomfortable, just don't do it. So it's a count of four on the inhale through the nose. Hold it at the top for seven. Exhale for eight. Four on the inhale. Hold. Exhale. Four, seven, eight. Just another deep inhale and exhale. And now just breathe normally. Again, if you get distracted in our time, it helps to come back to your breath, to pay attention to your breath, this life-giving air within you. And when God breathed God's breath into those first humans, it was, it was called pneuma, or spirit, having to do with God's spirit, wind, breath, breathed into us. And that spirit is within us helps us to connect with God. We call this a time of restful attentiveness, where we are in God's presence, attentive, knowing that God always is communicating with us through the Holy Spirit. But sometimes we need to set aside a time without distraction to open our ears, 
Listen for God's voice, a message from God. Be attentive. At the same time, we're being restful. And listen. I'll do something a little different today with two different readings. First, a prayer poem by Pastor Ted Loder from his book, Gorillas of Grace. And we'll just let that be our introduction prayer again to come back to your breath. And if distractions come, just let them go. Maybe picture them as brightly colored balloons that a thought that you see from a distance and rather than staring at it, watching, just let it go by, let it float off. If another thought comes, let it float off. Just allow yourself to, to listen, to let the words soak in like rain to dry ground. Just let it soak into you and listen. Loder's poem, Draw Me to Yourself, goes like this. In this moment, draw me to yourself, Lord, and make me aware not so much of what I have given as of all I have received and so have yet to share. Send me forth in power and gladness and with great courage to live out in the world what I pray and profess, that in sharing I may do justice, make peace, grow in love, enjoy myself, other people, and your world now and you forever. I just invite you to let Loder's poem be our introduction into our scripture today. And we'll use it at the very end as our closing prayer. See if you can feel what Loder is praying. Hear and feel. Draw me to yourself by Ted Loder. In this moment, draw me to yourself, Lord, and make me aware, not so much of what I've given as of all I have received, and so have yet to share. Send me forth in power and gladness, and with great courage to live out in the world what I pray and profess, that in sharing I may do justice, make peace, grow in love, Enjoy myself, other people, in your world now, and you forever. And our practice is called Lectio Divina, or Divine Reading. We'll take a piece of scripture, and today from Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. And again, I invite you to breathe, to rest, to open your heart, open your mind, open your listening to words from Scripture. I'll read it through three times. The first time through, just get the broad picture, the big story, major themes. And the second time through, see if you can pick out an image, a word, or a phrase, a memory, a nudge, whatever the message is, the word from God for you today. And just let that piece of the scripture or the thought that comes to you, just let that settle into your heart and live there for a little while. And so Micah 6, the author writes, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before the Lord with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of river of oil? 
Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The Lord has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. Our author kind of brings us in the back door to receive grace. Starts by listing what could we possibly do to earn God's favor, to earn God's love, to work our way into God's righteousness. What could we do? And then he uses unbelievable things, starting with common sacrifices of the day, maybe a calf, a year old, a burnt offering, and then just blows it up. Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with 10,000 rivers of oil, this extravagant, these gifts beyond belief that not even the richest person in the world could buy and give to God as somehow we could buy God's favor or earn it or do something on our own that would make God love us more. There's nothing we can do to make God love us more. And then our author in Micah 6 says, The Lord has told you, immortal, what is good. How should we live? What's pleasing to the Lord? Do justice, love kindness, walk humbly with your God. Receiving grace, we're invited to give grace. Receiving love, we're invited to give love. Having received mercy, we're inviting, invited to do justice. Seeing ourselves in relationship to God and being invited into relationship, we're invited to walk humbly with our God. It's a great image, and maybe that's a good one for today to picture ourselves walking humbly with our God and for us that call ourselves Christians, followers of Jesus, it might be easier to picture ourselves with Jesus side by side, walking with Jesus. In whatever way we are called together with Jesus to do justice, whatever that is for you, for me. to love kindness, to have that be what makes our heart full and satisfied and maybe beat a little faster in a good way, to love kindness, to be that love, to be kind, and to walk humbly. I think Walking next to Jesus, the natural state, natural posture would be to walk humbly. But Jesus would say, I love you. I call you friend. I share with you what is mine. It's not what a master does to a servant, but what friends do is share all they know with each other. As we walk humbly with Jesus, we walk as a beloved friend, head held high, so that we might do justice with Jesus, to love kindness with Jesus, to walk humbly 
with Jesus. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before the Lord with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The Lord has told you, O mortal, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. by describing earning God's favor, trying to please God somehow with what we give in terms of material offerings. Instead, the author, I think, describes grace, God's unearned, undeserved, unending, unconditional love for you and for me forever, no matter what. And we're invited to walk humbly, do justice, love kindness, This third reading, afterward, we'll have a time of silence. I invite you to just enter the silence, reflect on the word from Micah. Find that word or phrase, that image, feeling, thought, memory, whatever, however the message comes to you. I invite you to feel the reading. Let a piece of it settle into your heart. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come to the Lord with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? The Lord has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. In this moment, draw me to yourself, Lord, and make me aware, not so much of what I've given as of all I have received and so have yet to share. Send me forth in power and gladness and with great courage, 
to live out in the world what I pray and profess, that in sharing I may do justice, make peace, grow in love, enjoy myself, other people, and your world now, and you forever. Amen. Go in peace to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. <laughs>